It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. So my friends, what do you know about primary care? Uh, you know, these health shows are just so interesting. We learn so much. Uh, I want to thank you, incidentally, for making this Sam LaSant Show the number one talk show in Northeastern Pennsylvania. I appreciate it. And particularly when they come up to me and my wife and they say, we really enjoy your health shows. And that's through the courtesy of our friends at Lehigh Valley Health Network, and particularly Lehigh Valley uh, Hospital in Hazleton. Uh, each month we provide as much information as we can to you in pertaining to health. Today, uh, interesting, primary care and APCS, and I'll let you know what that is a little later on. My guest, Heather Sugarman and Rosalind Johnson. So first, before we get into the, what is primary care? Well, primary care, um, like we have said before, is really your first touch base to healthcare. We do a lot of management in things such as chronic conditions. We treat you for things such as, um, you know, your more common uh, acute injuries, acute um, infections and so forth. And we also do a lot of your health screenings. So we usually touch base with you at least once a year, if not more often, and try to help you with medication management and imaging, all kinds of stuff. To become a primary care uh, clinician, what what is what is required? Well, primary care consists of family medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics, and sometimes they even put OB and gynecology under that. And they are physicians, they're nurse practitioners, physician assistants, and then also you have your staff, your medical assistants, the staff in the office, the secretaries. They also. Um, you know, are all included in primary care. When do I need a primary care clinician versus a doctor? Rosalind? Well, really, you should probably establish with a primary care provider, whether they're a doctor or an APC, um, at, at least once a year, we're probably your best tool that you would put in your back pocket because we kind of keep everything in a nice package for you between your specialists, between your screenings. Um, we're probably your first touch when you have any questions on your medical care. So you would give us a call anytime for a routine visit or if you have uh, if you're sick or you have an injury and you're not quite sure what to do. Okay, can you talk about your qualifications? I'm a nurse practitioner. I went to school at the Reading Hospital School, in, school of Nursing to get my diploma in nursing, so I was a registered nurse, and I went back to school to get my bachelor's science in nursing, master's science in nursing, and I did postgraduate school to get my nurse practitioner. So advanced practice clinicians who are nurse practitioners and physician assistants, they have extensive training postgraduate so that you can do what a primary care can do. And your background? Same thing. So I have a degree, I have my BSN or bachelor's in nursing. Um, most nurse practitioners do do some type of bedside nursing. So I know Heather also did ICU. I did ICU for many years and then decided to go back. Um, and then I did a three year, what we call a family nurse practitioner program at Drexel University, um, where I got my master's in nursing and trained to do primary care. How do you let me know the difference between going to a medical doctor um, versus an APCS? Well, I feel like all APCs work very closely with MDs and DOs. So, you know, if there's something that we can't figure out or we're having, we're maybe stumped on, we always have someone that we collaborate with that we're able to reach out to in case maybe we need a little bit more help. But some people only see us. Some people only see the APCs um, as their primary care provider. Um, we do almost a lot of the same things that they can do um, as far as assessment, treatment, we order images, we order screenings, um, we order labs, we interpret and we prescribe. So there's not much difference there, which is why sometimes people only see us as their primary care. APCs get extensive training and also our experience. So I've been doing this since I graduated with my nurse practitioner in 2004 and I've been doing this for that long. So it's also our experience. When you talk about, is there any special interest that the both of you have? 
Yeah, I, I did family practice, so nurse practitioners can specialize in, in different things, pediatrics, mental health, uh, women's health. I'm a family practice nurse practitioner. And you? I am as well, yep. So we see all ages, newborns up through geriatrics. We're not limited in our ages in family medicine or primary care. Um, like Heather said, some of us will specialize, um, maybe even cardiology or urology, but Heather and I both do primary care. Primary care. So when you're, um, just like the doctors do, there's, you know, the great thing about Lehigh Valley a health network is that you know when you go into one doctor you're really going to a lot of doctors because there's so many people in the chain that they may want to talk to so it's like you know you always say well get a second opinion well, I, well when you're going to Dr. Lehigh Valley you're getting like 25 opinions or whatever because you know I, you need to find out what's going on you do the same thing in, in conferring with you know uh, different medical people to give you advice in areas um, sure. I mean, I'm sure Heather has too. Like, I will call a specialist all the time if I need to clarify something for a patient um, or if I need to reach out to a specialist and say, hey, this is the situation I have with our mutual patient. So um, what's nice about being with the network is that all the specialists, we have tiger texting, we have different ways that we can reach out to each other and just say, hey, this is what I came across. You know, what do you think? And a lot of times we'll have phone conversations Conversations, tiger text conversations with each other. So you're right. All of our patients will have a very well-rounded yeah. um, opinion. So Heather, you know, you, you said you've been how many years? Twenty some years? Yeah, since 2004. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. As in, as in our industry, okay. You see these cameras, and you know, one time that camera used to be 15, 14 times the size. You know, technology, etc. And now it's just everything's advanced. What have you seen throughout the years? in you know in the in your field in terms of um, medical health advice well physicians now the the thing is that a lot of the primary cares you don't have as many as you did before and that's why you are seeing more advanced practice clinicians um, a lot of the physicians especially in our area are are starting to retire so you need more advanced practice clinicians to help with that mm -hmm. so Really, patients or people should not be nervous or concerned the fact when they come to a person like Rosalind or you as a, as a um, uh, APC, um, because you do have that experience, correct, Rosalind? Yeah, they, you know, we really want to develop race relationships with our patients. Um, we want them to feel comfortable to come and see us, have, you know, if they have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us about them. Um, we want to be that first touch base for them. So uh, when I was talking before we start doing the show, uh, I asked what an APC was, okay, and then we have PAs, okay, and then we have CRNPs. I feel like I'm reading the alphabet here. Uh, so tell me the difference here so I, I don't get confused. Well, APCs are advanced practice clinicians and they include nurse practitioners, physician assistants, nurse midwives, nurse anesthetists. So there are other advanced practice clinicians other than just NPs and PAs. A NP and often called CRNP is a certified registered nurse practitioner and we use certified and registered because you do take a certification exam and you are registered with your state and then physician assistant or now um, more often they're called physician associates um, they're also advanced practice too. Is there a difference Rosalind? Um, there's a difference in our training. Um, a lot of nurse practitioners have done um, a stint of RN or nursing where we have been in the hospitals or some type of nursing field where we were at the bedside, we've treated patients and then we went back to school where PAs typically go to school all the way through and then they start doing patient care. I'm going to go backwards here now. When I'm interviewing people in any position, I always ask them, you know, um, the passion they have for it because if you have a passion for what you're doing, you just, you really get into it. and. Other than it's a job, you know, I hate when it's a job because I feel sorry for people just to choose for a job. They have to have passion. So why did you decide to go into the medical field? Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. Senior year of high school, my girlfriend and I said, 
ah, let's go be nurses. We don't know what we want to do. Let's go be nurses. Yeah. Both of us never had any family that were in the medical field, so we didn't know. So we chose a nursing school because you ended up having clinical your second week of school, so you would know if you liked it or not. And I liked it from the beginning. Now, before that, I worked at Boyer's IGA in McAdoo, and I loved people. I loved to work with people. That's interesting. So I think that's why I and went so as in. soon as you got into it, you just knew this was for you, okay? Uh, same thing with my wife. She's a registered nurse, you know, and, and sometimes it's very difficult to be married to a registered nurse. You go and get this taken care of, honey, I get, get, or if I don't call the doctor, she'll call the doctor. You know, you nurses are this pain. I know, we are. Why did you decide to go into medical? Well, um, actually, growing up, my dad um, battled Crohn's disease, so oh. he was often in the hospital. He had multiple surgeries. I think um, treatment for Crohn's disease has really advanced, but you know, 30 some years ago, it oh, yes. wasn't as advanced like we had mentioned earlier. Yeah. And so we spent a lot of time in the hospital. I really respected a lot of the um, surgeons and the specialists, gastroenterologists that he saw, and it just, it touched me. And it was just something I always was very, very interested in. From my first anatomy class, learning about health, I just threw myself. So very young age, I knew I wanted to go into the medical field. You know, it's interesting you said, you know, uh, Crohn's disease, there's so many advances today that wasn't available, you know, back then. Right. And you see that in medicine today. And Brian Nestor, when I was interviewing him, and he mentioned about, you know, we opened the cancer uh, center, the difference that what they have now thank God, versus if my mother-in-law had those opportunities, I'm sure she'd still be around today, you know. Uh, so you see these things, and now, do you have to go and get um, certification so often, or do you have to do certain schoolings or certain courses you have to take? I'll start with you. Uh, we do have to recertify every five years. Now, nurse for that's for a nurse practitioner. Nursing and we still also have to do this for your RN, you need to recertify every two years and you have to have so many CEUs, continuing education units. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have so many credits every two years. As a nurse practitioner, you do it, you have to recertify every five years and you have to have so many continuing education credits and so many practice hours that you're working. And you, the same thing? Same, same exact thing, yeah. Do you feel what your experience is, okay, that, you know, you have a feeling and a knowledge of what that person has because of your experience? Rosalind? Sure. I mean, there's a lot of times where someone comes in, they start describing their symptoms, and I know right away what's going on. It's, it's a difficult task, medical, you know, in, 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 the, in the medical field today because, you know, the compassion has to be there. Every person that comes in you is a new person. You may have had a trying day, and that last person that comes in, you just have to be as fresh as you were when the first person. How do you do that? It's not always easy. Um, you really got to love what you do. I, I say that from all the time, that you can't do this day in and day out unless you, you know, you really got to love it. Okay. And how about you? Well, and I feel like in primary care, we truly know our patients more than just their conditions, right? We see them multiple times. We know a lot of things like maybe they have some barriers to their health, whether it's financial, transportation, maybe it's a religious barrier, yeah. you know? So that really does tailor how we treat our patients. And you're right, our last patient of the day needs the same attention as our very first patient of the day. So sometimes for us, it's just, sitting there and listening and just taking the time to hear the whole picture, see what else is going on that might be contributing to how they're feeling or their condition that they have. The other factor is, it's a human factor, the human element. My wife, when she was an RN and she was in the hospital, you know, she had a patient and, and if the patient passed, I mean, she took it home with her. She, I'd see her crying and, you know, and, and it, it, you know, because you have a family and you have those emotions, it's not like you don't care. How do you, how do you separate that, that you know, emotion from the client or the patient that you know you're gonna try to help, but you know, they have a long road. I mean, you know, having children, you know, with that, you bring, you bring these things home with you, you know, and don't talk to me, honey, I just had a rough day today. I mean, how do you do that? Well, you don't need to separate it. I, I've cried many a time I'm sure in the office with patients. Yeah. Um, because I know their families, I, they've become, they've become family, 
to me. Exactly. Yeah. So, and I've come home and have had bad days and cried and... How about you? Same thing. I feel like that's what um, we do. We really try to sit and you, you can't separate the emotion with yeah. it sometimes. Sometimes the emotion is what gets you driving to really do well for your patients. And you know, there are plenty of nights, I'm sure you can speak of it too, where we'll wake up and we're still thinking about that one patient, yeah, my wife you know, do the same thing. yeah, I think that's, you know, why we care and why we try to do such a good job is because we care. And I, it's, I think compassion is, is so very important with that person. And, and, and walking them through and letting them know that there is sunshine out there, okay? And really believing it, you know? And, and I, as I've been doing these shows throughout the years, I've seen how the healthcare with Lehigh Valley has been growing, you know, and, and, and just, it's, it's a great thing. I hope I never need them, but however they're there. I mean, it's like, uh, I'm talking to uh, Heather Sugarman and uh, Ro uh, Roslyn Johnson. Uh, they're uh, primary care, okay? And what we're gonna do, we have a plane flying over there. I told them, don't take my private jet out, but they have to take it out when I'm doing my show. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the San Lucente Show, folks. Remember, 24-7 SSPTV.com. All of our neighborhood programs are there. I'm talking to uh, Heather Sugarman and Rosalind Johnson, a primary care. Okay, why is it important to have a primary care person? And tell me when, why I should be coming at least once a year for a yearly exam. Rosalind, you want to start? Well, really, coming for your annual or your preventative well visit, that's where we try to screen you for any potential problems. You know, say you have borderline blood pressure, we might talk about some diet, lifestyle changes that you can do before we have to put you on medicine, things like that. So trying to catch things early on, it's also a great time for us to start some you know, early health screenings, maybe educate you on some cancer screenings, like when you should start your pap smears and your colonoscopies, maybe your mammograms, um, what risk factors, whether they're family or just your lifestyle risk factors um, that may prompt us to do, say, a AAA screening because you're a gentleman who had a very long smoking history. So we try to educate you on those things, but really seeing us once a year for that well visit is just to make sure that we catch things before before they become problems. That, Heather, I'm sure you've seen this throughout the years, okay? As I said, I am the number one baby when it comes to gun exams, I, you know. But they have to be done, and you know, you'd rather see, you know, something prevented, you know, instead of saying, oh my God, why don't you come to me like, let's see what you can do now. How many times have you seen that in your life? I, I've seen it a lot, because there are people that say, I, I want to, I, I don't want to find a problem when it comes, I'll deal with it. And that is, that, is not a so good way to it, think. It, and I, that's me. It's so stupid. When, I mean, it's just like so dumb. But, you know, that's what happens. And I'm hoping you can be able to convince people to say, look, we, we should have a, you know, where are you located at? On Vine Street. If people knew where Greeby yeah. used to be, yeah, yeah. that's where we are. One, I'm at 141 North Vine Street. And who is there with you? There are actually four clinicians now in my office. Jillian McArdle is there. She's a nurse practitioner. Um, Catherine Landron is a physician assistant. And we have Dr. Rodriguez. Okay. He's a physician. Yeah. yeah. And where are you located at? I am at Station Circle on Humboldt. Um, we're kind of right behind where Turkey Hill and Sonic is. Mm -hmm. So um, very nice building back there. And who's mm -hmm. with you there? Um, Dr. Al Musa is there with me. So um, between the two of us, it's kind of nice if you want to have a male provider, maybe you feel more comfortable talking about some concerns. Dr. Al Musa is there, a female provider, I'm there. Mm -hmm. so. um, the phone number is on the screen, folks, um, to get your appointment. Um, so you do a major um, exam when the person comes in, okay? Now, in order for, like, for example, why, why should I have, why should I go to you as a primary care person? I mean, what, what would be the major reason for that? If I'm feeling good and I don't have any aches and pains and 
I'm all right, you know, I mean, wh why should I come to you, Ron? Well, don't forget, not only will we talk to you about preventative routine screenings and so forth, but we'll also help manage a lot of your chronic conditions. Say you have high blood pressure, or you have a thyroid disorder, or anything like that. We will still help manage that every couple of months, and we'll kind of guide you in the right direction on lifestyle changes, medication management, everything that will kind of keep you in the best health and the best quality of um, care. What do you find the most common um uh, ailment or illness that you've seen throughout the system? I mean, there's a lot, but what do you think is the most common? Well, in town, the chronic illnesses, most of them that we see are diabetes, yeah. high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. They're usually the three big ones that yeah. we see. And, and, and what are some symptoms for those things, Rosalind? Well, for diabetes, a lot of times it is um, weight changes, excessive thirst, um, maybe just general fatigue and not feeling well. Um, for um, cholesterol, really, you wouldn't know until we did your routine yeah. um, blood work, things like that. And that's why it's good to go to the primary care once a year because those things could be found early and you could find that your sugar's high because you may have a high sugar for years and not have any symptoms. I, th throughout the years doing these shows, okay, I'm telling you when people come up to me and say, you know, your show saved my life, you know, et cetera. PSAs, for example, for men, all right? Um, this person never realized, okay, they went all of a sudden, PSA was like seven or, or whatever, and get, you know, and sure enough, he didn't think anything of it, but thank God he went and they were able to do what they had to do. So these are the kind of things that are hidden that you don't know. And so that's why I asked what is the common in different areas. For example, unfortunately our area is high in cancer, okay, which is sad. But as I said on the interview, the bad news is you have cancer. The good news is look what we have with the cancer unit we have right now. And same thing in advanced medicine. In closing, uh, wh what do you tell our, our viewers? Definitely to find a primary care provider that they trust. So it could be a physician or a physician assistant or a nurse practitioner. Okay, so um, same thing, what, what do you advice you have? Just go for that one annual well exam. Get established with a primary care. Develop a wonderful relationship with them so you feel open. We will always work with you. We'll talk about your concerns and we'll go from there. Okay, so if they call this number, 888-402-LBHN, they would request, you know, I'd like to have a primary care person. I'd like to make an appointment. I saw the Heather and Rosalind on the Sam LaSant show and Sam was so handsome that I, <laughs> oh no, that wasn't the part. But, uh, but the fact is they can get to you and, and, and make their appointment. Yes. I, I just think it's, um, you know, I go every year, I have to go and, you know, found a couple of things that not bad, but, you know, watching certain things and thank God for that, you know. So uh, I applaud the both of you for what you're doing. It's, it's, a, it's a challenging job, but you have to have that passion and you have to have the feeling for that person. And I think that's bedside matter sometimes you don't have them as much as you'd like to have them, you know. But I found with our medical people in this area, they have those bedside manners. So keep the good work up. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, so remember 24-7 SSP TV, all of our health shows are there. Make your appointment. Don't be like me. Well, I go every year reluctantly. I mean, it's like I get the phone call from Benio and say, all right, time, oh, do I have to go for, yep. And, but it's a good thing, and uh, we're trying to keep you healthy. We need more viewers for the Sam Sancho, so stick around. We'll see you next time.